Yes. So now I'm going to show you how to prepare this conditional formatting chart. And let me show you. You look at the legends here. We have the price categorized in three different categories like price less than or equal to 500, between 500 and 1000, and greater than 1000. Now, how to do this? You, look, you have a look at it. See, I changed the price of, let's say, product 4 to 2, 3, 4, 5. It's definitely more than 1000, so it will provide me in green color. The rest of them, I'll change this to again 1500. See, based on the value you give here in the price, the chart is changing. We'll see how to do this. See, suppose I used a normal column chart on this. You remember we have only a single column with numbers, single series is available. So if I insert a normal column, clustered column chart on this, this is how it will look for us. Everything in the same color because we have a single series here. So in order to display this as multiple series, categorizing the price in three different categories, we want to show the chart something like this. As and when the price changes, I would like to see the bar color also change or the column color also change. So pre to prepare this chart, this kind of chart, we need to first prepare the data something like this. Now let me show you from the scratch how it is done. Okay. So over here, I'll just be using if condition. So very simple if condition formula here. You give if you're going to check whether the given price is less than or equal to 500. If that is true, then I would like to see this number in this column where we have labeled it as less than or equal to 500. If it is not true, you just give NA. Why NA? See, if I provide zero or some other value, I will be still able to plot it on the chart. See, if it is not belonging to this category, I don't want this number to get plotted on my chart. As simple as that. For that, I'm going to give it this way. NA error. NA function will give us NA error. So I'll just uh, remove this show formulas. Now it will display like this. You see? I'll give another function here. See over here, I need to use if. So with an if, I have two conditions to check simultaneously. First one, whether the given price is greater than 500. And the second condition is less than or equal to 1000. Both should be true for us. So I have to check these conditions simultaneously. If I use only if, I can check only one condition at a time. Okay, so I'll use and within this, within and function, I'll check for this number. Say whether this number is greater than 500. And the next condition, the same number should also be less than or equal to 1000. If it is true, if and gives me true, when does and give me true? Only when both the conditions that I have provided is going to evaluate to true. Only if the given number is between 500 and 1000 and gives me true as the answer. Even if one of the condition fails and gives us false. So using the answer of and function, I am going to decide whether this number has to be displayed or not. Say for value, if and gives us true, this value should be displayed. Else, again, NA error. So NA function will give me an error. So same thing over here as well. I'll give if condition. I'll check if it is greater than 1000. In value if true. Just one. Else. In a error. So now once I give these formulas. I'll just copy paste it to the other cell side. 
Now you observe it carefully. You can see here. See. 400 is visible. 450 is visible because we have given the condition to check if it is less than or equal to 500. So all numbers which are less than or equal to 500 will be displayed in this call. Let us check. I'll change the value on the price column. You see, it will appear here. And all values between 500 and 1000 will appear in between. And values above 5000, uh, sorry, 1000 will appear in the last column. So we have done something like this. Now let me change it to 230. See, to come back over here. Once you prepare this, you have to select the range of cells, go to insert, you should choose stacked column. The reason, see, you have NA errors in between. If you choose clustered column, you will get unequal distance between the columns like this. Because, see, for one particular price, only one value is displayed. The other two will be NA. So according to this data, we need to see three different columns for every product. But the value is available for only one category. So to display it properly in a neat manner, you need to say stacked column. And you can keep this chart on this data, covering it. See, now if I change the value here, then give 650, you look at it, the color will change. For product 4, I changed 650. It's between 500 and 1000. So it is showing in a different color. You can also choose to change the colors of these columns later as you wish. So currently it is taking the theme color over here. I could also change the colors. See, I can change the theme or I can individually choose and try to give my own uh, color that I wish to see. See, I, I don't want this blue color. Let's say I would like to change it to some other thing. I'll go here. So you need to go to format tab for this and then choose a different color for that. So anything less than 500, I would like to display in, let's say purple. Between 500 and 1000. Let's say this yellow and above 1000, I would like to show it in orange. So you can choose your own colors as well, like this. And as and when you change the price in this table, so it keeps changing on your chart as well. The series keeps changing on your chart as well. So have you understood this part, all of you? <laughs> See, now I'll show you how to create a dynamic chart. So when I say dynamic, based on the input you provide you, by your selection or let's say some input, your chart has to change accordingly. How? You look at this, we have cr created something like this. When I choose all quarters, there is no change visible. Now when I choose first quarter, only the columns belonging to the first quarter will be highlighted. Second, third and fourth in the same manner. We are able to highlight only a particular uh, section of your series. Not all the columns are colored differently here. We are trying to change the color based on the selection we do. Now let's see how to do this. So I'll just copy this data and add another sheet here and just put that over here. So these can be changed to your month names as well. So I'll just change it to Jan, Feb, March or uh, till December. So these are the sales values. Based on the selection I do, so this has to change. The chart I up apply on this has to change. Now let's insert 
clustered column chart on it. So normally how we do, I'll just insert a clustered column chart. Now let me zoom it. Yeah. I'll also remove the grid lines so that it looks good. Okay. Now, see I would like to use some form controls. So there are something known as form controls here. You need to use the developer tab for that. So if you don't have this developer tab in your uh, system, if it is not visible in your Excel application, just right click anywhere on the ribbon. You have customized the ribbon option. You select it, you will find developer tab over here. You need to enable it. This will be like this. You need to enable it and say OK. So then this developer tab will appear. OK. So after this developer tab is visible to us, you can go use the controls group. You have insert option. Again, an insert option. You have two divisions, ActiveX controls, form controls. Please use only form controls here. So form controls don't require you to write any program. They can be used directly in Excel without writing any programs. But ActiveX controls are not like that. So most of the controls uh, in ActiveX require you to write some kind of program. Okay, and they're, uh, uh, you know, not that safe to use when compared to form controls. Okay, you can always go for the form controls to use it without any programming. Now here, I would like to use option button. I'm trying to provide an option to the user to choose the quarters. So I'll use option button here. Click on it and start drawing it. You hold the mouse button and draw one option button. I need four more. So one option button to choose all the quarters, another four to choose individual quarters. So I'll make a copy of this. I'll paste it four times. Okay, after pasting it, you are going to position it just below the chart. And just increase the size of the chart. Yes. So now, use Control A to select all the objects at once. Again, holding Control, you deselect the chart. So now you can move all of them together. Yes. So after this, see the last option button. I'll from the last option button we have. I'll start positioning it on the line of this chart. Okay, just go here. So you can't select this option button just by clicking on it. It starts getting enabled like this. We don't want it this way. I want to move it. So in order to move or resize the option button. You need to hold control key and then tap on it. Then it will allow you to select it and now you can move it as well. So don't worry about the alignment in the beginning. You just position them. Try to position them in a line. Okay. I'll show you how to align it later. So now you see we have positioned it. So I want all of them to fall in a single, a proper line should be formed and the, there should be an equal distance between these option buttons. So how to get it done, we'll see. Select these option buttons. You can see they are not in the same line. They are not aligned properly. After you choose them, you go to format tab over here. You will find align option. So you need to choose align middle. This will keep everything in the same line. And to arrange it, so to provide proper distancing between each of them, use distribute horizontally. So they'll have equal distance between each of the option button now. Next, again, hold control, select the option button. 
now you have to see you have to start renaming it and just say quarter so let's say this is quarter 1 i want to give the option quarter 1 So this one, I'll rename it to quarter two. So you need to rename for all the quarters like this. Quarter three and quarter four. and font and uh, these things cannot be changed for these buttons they are uh, system specific in case you want to give your own font and such things you should only draw the option button and you should not label it for labeling you need to take a separate text box and you can provide uh, the kind of text that you want to give you can't uh, not give it straight away within these uh, boxes that is provided it will take only the font and the color provided by the system you can't change them now i have renamed all this so the the next part of it is how to connect it with the data that i have see now i go and choose here quarter 1 2 or 3 but there should be some change in the data or at least in the chart so to bring this change we have to use some formula even before that i need to link these option buttons with the data how to do that so i'll show you that so let's go here right click on any of these option button any option button is fine you just have to right click you will find format control over here select that the cell link you go here choose one of the cells somewhere nearby to this data you just choose the cell link see now i have selected the fourth option button how does it know see the the number of this option button is obtained by the order of insertion whichever option button you gave first see this one we inserted first so it takes one this we gave in the end so it takes five not by positioning your option button the order of insertion is important which you inserted first that will take one as the number and this cell link is the only connection for us to connect this option button with the data now suppose i have selected quarter 1 so it will tell me if it is 1 over here i have selected quarter 1 option button so that is the indication using this we need to write a formula here so for that i'll just number them like this see i'll use if function again if the above number that is available here the cell link value i'll make it absolute because i have to use the same cell link value to compare in all these cells if the cell link value that is d2 is equal to this value so oh, i need to change the numbers to quarters guys let me change it later it's not 1 to 12 you need to provide the quarter numbers that is for jan feb and march it should be 1 1 and 1 okay so if it is equal to 1 then display the sales value else na na function so now it should be like this so this should be 2 should be 3 and there should be 4 now if i copy paste this so you can see first quarter is selected so we have got first quarter values 
Now, if I choose fourth quarter, you can see fourth quarter values are displayed here. Same thing, third and second also. Now, to this data, I will be including in my chart. So currently, my chart includes only this. So what I'll do? I'll just say right click, select data. We are going to include the second column that we gave through formula. I'll choose that and say OK. Now you can see two series over here. But we don't want it this way. We want a single color to be displayed. So for that, see, as soon as I chose all quarters, so no difference in color. You will see only when you choose individual quarters, you get to see a different color here. And let me select one of the data series, right click, format data series. You go here, see, you get to see series overlap. You just say 100%. Overlap the series 100%. Now you can see it looks like this. It's very nice to see this way. You can use such charts in your dashboards or some reports. You know, it looks very attractive. Okay, you can also change the colors of these columns. I just select the series. So let me choose only these series first. Go to design or format. You can choose from the list of colors that are available here. So if you don't have a color that you want to provide here, you can always go for more colors and provide it. So I'll choose silver and this one. Only this part, let's say, go to format. So I would like to give this yellow. And I want to change the format in which the chart, I'll choose a chart style. Okay, so if we change it again, I have to do those changes. So let us keep it like this. You look at it. So it performs like this. So you can do something like this using option button and uh, overlap the series to give this effect. Is it clear to all of you how we did this? Is it clear to all of you? Yes or yeah. no, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let us see another chart. Yes, see this chart that you're currently seeing is interactive chart. You can actually interact with your chart with the same form controls. So let me show you here. See, we have three separate series, sales, profit, and profit percentage. I would like to choose any one of these series or two of these series or all of them together to represent on the chart over here. So you can see we have used checkbox. I, whenever I choose a particular series, then it gets plotted. Now, if I want only profit and profit percentage, I'll remove sales from this. Or if I only want sales and profit, I'll remove this. Or only sales, I'll remove this. So you can uh, actually compare these series. So any series that you want to plot on the chart using this checkbox. So let us see how to insert this kind of a chart, how to prepare it. I'll just delete the chart now and also the form controls. Now I'll start plotting a chart on this data. I'll go here, I'll insert clustered column chart. Let me choose. 
So I hope you remember the combination charts from yesterday's class. We have a column with percentages here. So when you have something like this, we choose secondary axis to plot them because the other two series are of high value. I can't use the same scale to plot the profit percentage. So what I'll do, select the series, right click, change series chart type. And over here, I can choose how the chart has to be plotted. You also have the combination chart available here. You can either directly go choose that. See, this will also help you do getting the job done. Or you could also customize it. See, now I want the profit percentage in secondary axis that is given. But I don't want it as clustered column here. I want it to be stacked column. So I'll just go here, change it to stack column. Say OK. You see, now we'll be able to see the data in this one. And to enable this uh, selection feature, we need to again use our developer tab. Go to insert. So this time I'll be using checkbox control. So select it. We are going to draw three checkboxes because we have three series. I want to provide uh, options for these three. I'll just make a copy of it. I'll show you again. So either you can hold control and select this in the mouse button and drag it. This is one way or the easiest way is copy this and paste twice just the easiest way holding control you can select this and you just drag it and place it this side again hold control and select this see if you don't hold control if you directly select it this is what happens it is just trying to enable it so we don't want this we want to move this so i'll hold control and select the object i'll move so now I want to align it as well. Select all three of them holding control button. Go to format, use align option, align middle. It will align all of them in the same line. Next, distribute horizontally so that they'll have equal space between them. After we have inserted them, aligned them, we are going to change their names here. See this, so this shows check box 4 I want to change it to sales here and this one to profit and this one and change it to profit percentage yes so again for even for checkbox, I need to use cell link. See, we have given the form controls. We need to connect it with the data in order to see the changes. So for that, I have kept a separate table in the far end of the sheet like this. See, the same data on which we plotted this chart initially. So the same thing has been used on the other side as well. But to get this, I have to give some formulas. And also, cell link has to be provided here. Say for checkbox, you don't get to see any number. And you have to provide cell link for every checkbox here. It's not like your option button, wherein you choose only one option button and you give the cell link. This doesn't work like that because it, ha it has got multiple selection. I need to provide cell link for every checkbox. So right click on it. Format control, use cell link. Now for sales, I'll just give that right on top of the sales column. Again, for profit, the same thing. I'll repeat the same thing. Give the cell link, cell link right on top of profit column. And for profit percentage as well. I know we are not getting to see anything here. Let me go and enable one of them see you get to see true i select all the three you get to see true here 
if I deselect them, it will show me false. So now I have to use a formula here. If I'll use a function, if the above rows cells, see I, will, I have to only absolute the row part if it is equal to true. True is a logical value, it's not text. So don't use double quotes here. If it is true, then I need to display this value, the sales value. If not, I need to provide an A error. So I'll copy paste this formula to all the other cells. See, currently I have select, deselected profit percentage, so it displays as false. So if I select it, it shows as zeros. I just have to go and format it to percentage. It will show me. Now I have to change the selection to this table. Currently it is taking from the other table that we have here. I have to change it to the table where we have provided the formulas and just delete these grid lines. Okay. Right click, select data. So now I'll change the data selection and go here I'll choose this. Don't select true false over here. It's only the headings and the data below that. You need to only choose that. Now you can see the change. If I select only profit or profit percentage or if I remove everything, it will be blank. Only these two or only sales and profit percentage. So you can choose what kind of uh, series has to be displayed on your chart. and You can play around with it like this. Okay, you can have multiple series and for all of that you can use it. This can be used with many other charts as well. So any chart you have, not only combination chart, it can be used on any chart that you have. Okay. So is it clear to all of you? Yeah, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yes. I suppose uh, if I want to... Uh, yeah. Put it in my Word document. This chart, no, no. With without format, this form controls you can. You will not yeah. get to see this form controls over there. Okay. It is no, not suppose, functional over there. If we are, uh, if we try to embed it on our document, even in that case, it doesn't work mm -hmm. because these form controls, it will work yeah. in Excel. Okay. So uh, because anyway, we are embedding the Excel itself inside the document. So I thought, because uh, here in my work, uh, this we have to do some multiple times. Mm, yeah. No, no, that's not possible. Even if you embed Excel, they will have to open the Excel file only again. Now, when I say embed Excel, the file is placed in another document. That's okay. all. And when you open the file only, you will be able to see this. I understood what you are trying to say is it should be visible on your document, correct? And uh, they yeah. should be able to select it. That's not possible. Okay. okay. And it, this is not possible in either PowerPoint or uh, Word. It's not possible. Only in Excel it is available currently. Okay. Okay. Now let me teach you pivot tables. I'll share the screen now. Yes. Are you able to see the data? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay. See, Pivot Table is a very, uh, you know, very useful tool that is available in Excel, especially for those who have not you know, any idea of formulas and they want to prepare really good reports, they can always rely on five tables. And even for people who have formulas, I don't say it is not useful for them, especially 
for summarizing very huge data this pivot table is a very useful tool okay now let me show you you need to first select the entire data even before you insert pivot table so then you need to go to insert tab and you have pivot table over here you need to choose this option you also have a shortcut alt n v will give you this create pivot table window i repeat alt n v i'll just type it here so one key at a time uh, this uh, alt dp any different alt dp is in the older versions it will give you pivot table wizard we don't want a, the we don't want a wizard here we need to create it directly so alt n v is the shortcut okay so the previous versions shortcut will also work all dp but you get a wizard here we don't require this wizard okay so we want it to be created automatically for that i use this shortcut so let let me show you again select all 10 v i get this create pivot table now you can see here the data is selected it will ask you choose where you want to place the pivot table report in the new worksheet or existing worksheet now i'll choose a new worksheet it's always better to choose a new worksheet because say tomorrow there might be some extra columns you might add to this or let's say some rows or you might require the space where the pivot table is given you don't want your data to be disturbed let's say in that case always new worksheet is fine so select this and say okay and now we can see a blank pivot table place holder is available to us so you can see the name of the pivot table as well you can also make changes to it if you require you can go change the pivot table name in this place now so this is the field headers that are this the field list that is available to us and you can see all the column names that we had in our tables you can just go here and choose the columns on which you want to prepare the report okay just go here i would like to show region wise sales i'll just select the columns and it will go and sit in the appropriate fields over here so we have rows columns values and filters so rows whatever you place in rows will appear in rows here so these are all appearing in rows now whatever you place in column so currently i haven't placed now if i want to place products in column i can place it here so now all products are appearing in columns for me and by default any column with numbers will just go and set in this values field and it also is summarizing the data based on the sum okay now if i want to change it i don't want sum of sales i would like to see average sales let's say region wise average sales and remove this product now let me go here either you can choose this drop down over here and select value field settings you can choose based on what function your values have to be summarized you can choose any function over here based on your requirement if i say average it will take average of sales and it will give me this way now it is showing me average of sales for all the regions now i'll undo it you also have this option to directly go here just select this right click it says summarize values by you can choose from here or you could also again go for value field settings over here and make the same changes that we did suppose you also want to format your numbers i want to show it with thousand separator two decimal places currency symbol all this i'll just click on number format see it allows me to format my data and choose this accounting say okay just say okay can you see this 
you have this currency symbol and all that so i have lot of options here to show your reports the way you want you can modify it you can summarize it uh, with all that you have you can summarize with different functions we also saw that now suppose as i showed so i'll include another column data i'll choose product see it appears right below the region now it is grouped like this for every region we have product wise sales being displayed it's grouped like this now i want to change the format in which the report is being displayed i i would like to change the layout of this report so to do that you have to place your cursor in the pivot table anywhere go to design tab over here see you have lot of options here i'll choose the layout report layout will be compact by default it will be in the compact form currently what you are seeing is a compact form of your pivot table now suppose i would like to see in the outline form when you click on it you look you see it is still grouped but it is outlined like this so we have products in a separate column region in a separate column and sales being displayed like this. so i want a more mature look or a professional look let's say we'll go for tabular form you can see it starts right in the same row and your group totals are shown at the end of the group previously the group total was being displayed at the top of the group and you would see the sub group members inside that now i want to see these values right next to this i'll just change it to tabular form go to design tab report layout choose this show in tabular form now along with this see i would like to see the region names repeating i'll go here repeat all item labels see it will repeat for me if you don't require you can always remove it as well and also i have a choice to display the grand total sub totals if i wish i can display if i don't want i can remove it also so i have it here grand totals so i'll say off grand totals are switched off sub totals also if i say do not show sub totals none of them will be displayed now if you want to enable them you can always go enable it see only for row totals or column totals or both so you can enable it based on your requirement not only this i can also change the appearance of my pivot table so how to do that i'll just zoom it a bit so you can go here you have lot of pivot table styles so select it you can choose from a huge gallery that is available here you have themes like light medium and dark you can choose from any of the themes based on your requirement again see you can go for various formats that are available to us so this looks good i'll choose this one so i would like to show my report like this so this took a very less time so if you had to do it through formulas you had to you know use sum if and sum ifs so a lot of things over here and it is not that dynamic as well now i can filter this so there are so many things that i can do with the available report so that with such ease they have uh, created reports using pivot table so that's very important tool in excel which will enable us to prepare reports in a very less time now let's say i would like to share this report directly to someone but not as a pivot table i don't want the pivot table to be shared i would like to only provide the report to them that's all the final report i don't want the pivot table to be shared so what i'll do i'll copy this pivot table and take another sheet see if you paste it it will create another pivot table i don't want it that way i want it as a mere data not pivot table so first paste it as values here it will give you this next again paste special formats 
again paste special width column width you are ready with the report so this is not a pivot table it's your ready report that we have prepared in excel you can just copy paste it take a screenshot or you can also copy paste and send it to someone you don't have to break your head formatting it applying borders applying number formats so everything is ready here you can just send it to them straight away so that is the advantage of this pivot table so let me show you a few advanced things apart from this let's go back to the pivot table that we have created See now, I would like to filter my data. How exactly? So you can either keep that in the page filter. See, I would like to filter my data on the customer type. As soon as you keep that in this field, filters. See, this is known as page filters. What is the difference? See, if I filter something right in the private table, it will just hide the rows for me. Say I want only glue guns. Only that will be visible. I don't want something like this. I want the values to change based on my selection. So currently it is giving us the sum of sales for all these products in the East region. But for which type of customer is it giving? It is including all the customer types. Now I don't want it for all customer types. I am specific about it. What is the sum of sales for enterprise customer type? I'll choose this and say so, okay. See, now we are seeing the change in the total. It is only for the enterprise type customer. These products were sold and this is the sum of sales for East region. Now if I choose multiple, I need to select multiple items. I'll choose enterprise and planet here. Again, the values will change. So this is a good option. But again, you see, if I have selected multiple items, it only displays as multiple items here. So I would like to see what I have selected in the filters. So we have something known as slicers. And the slicer option is available only since 2000. Uh, 13 version remove this I'll remove it from page filters now go to analyze tab here keep your pivot table selected to see these two tabs so I'll keep the cursor here in the pivot table we have analyze so in that you have insert slicer choose that see it will ask you based on which column you would like to see the slicer I'll choose customer type here and so and you also have an option to customize the look of the slicer based on the theme you have used for your pivot table you can see here whether you want a dark one or light one see choose this and I can also resize it okay so now if I select something in this slicer, it will filter the data based on that. And I can also multi-select over here. So this looks very neat. See, this will show me and you can keep multiple slicers for multiple columns. It's all your wish and we use these slicers and timeline option in preparing dashboards using pivot tables so i'll be showing one for you how to prepare a simple dashboard using pivot table so we'll be covering that now let me delete this okay let us keep it i'll clear filters i will see all this data nothing is filtered now let me show you inserting timeline now what is this timeline timeline insert timeline you get to see only one column here, date. Timeline is available only for columns with date. If you have date column in your data, you can use it for that purpose. Okay, we don't have something similar. Let us go with the same option. Okay, fine. 
So let's go here. See, we have two years data here. Either you want to compare it on month, year, quarter, day. You can choose any of these. Now I want to go quarter wise. See, for two years you have quarters. So I'll choose quarter two for 2008. It will appear here. The total is changing. Only the total is getting changed. I can extend the selection as well. But uh, I cannot select quarter one and one year and quarter one and another year. That's not possible. <coughs> so you can choose to display quarter one of any one particular year. Or I can extend it as well. This is possible. And I can also choose to filter it based on the year or month or even individual days. See, it will show you all the days in that particular year. You can scroll it like this. So these are the options provided in the advanced versions of uh, Excel. You can go check them. It is really, uh, you know, very attractive feature that they have included. And uh, I'll show you how these things will be useful to us when we prepare the dashboard. Now, before that, I would also like to show you how we can group dates in our pivot table. Now, I'll remove this product from here. Now, we have region-wise total sales. I would like to include date here. So currently it is displaying like this. See, as soon as I insert a date, you can see it is grouped in three different columns. Year, quarter and date. So when I expand it, see, it is grouped in such a way that the highest one is year, then quarter and then month. I don't want it this way. I would like to see it only quarter wise or let's say only month wise. How to get it done? Right click on this. Right click on any part of the date, you have group option here. Select it. You can see here it is grouped month, quarter, and year wise. All three are selected. I'll go here. I would like to see only quarter wise, let's say. I'll remove selection on months and years and say OK. So I want to place these date column in columns. We can look at the results like this now. If you want to change it to months, again, right click, group, change the selection to month, remove on quarters, just say OK. It will display based on the month as well. Now let me change the orientation of my report. I will keep regions in column and date this months in the rows. So you can rotate your report in any format you want and still be able to display it the way you want it. So I'll just clear filters on date. Yes. See? So you have a lot of options like this. So grouping dates is really beneficial to someone who want to prepare the report on the period, periods like uh, month-wise, quarter-wise, half-yearly or let's say yearly. So this manner you can group it. So there is a custom grouping as well. Now let me show you that. Select it, right click. You have group. So let's go here. See, so you, you can see here starting at, ending at. It is giving you the dates from which date it is starting, which date it is ending. Now suppose I want to group it by every seven days. I can do that. See? Select date, only days, select days. So you can give number of days. So if you want to keep starting at, ending at in the same manner, then it's fine. You could also change them if you want. Okay, now I'll say number of days as seven. I want to prepare a weekly report. We don't have any week option here. So I'll just group it based on the days. So say okay. You can see here, for every seven days period, it is giving me the report now. For entire two years, I have grouped it in seven days frequency. Distribution is for seven days. 
you can group it in the custom order like this so this is also possible again you want to remove it just change it same thing can be applied on timing as well hours minutes and seconds so even that is also possible is it clear till here all of you uh yes madam uh suppose uh, uh if the in that uh, data section if the data is getting changed day by day basis yes so instead of creating this pivot on daily basis mm -hmm. just if i keep refreshing something like that you want to okay we, you want to see how the data can be included dynamically as and when the data is added i'll show you that see in the data sheet we have this mute yourself please okay so now this data is a cell range okay it doesn't get uh, what to say increased automatically every time i have to change the report i have to again select the data and refresh it instead what you could do is the one time solution for that is without having to use any formulas what you could do is change this data to a table see it is in a tabular format only i'm not saying that but it is a cell range it is not a table object now how to create a table just place your cursor in the data control t is the option this shortcut to create a table or you could also just go to insert and say table this does the same job now you don't forget to give this my table has headers so let me give this just say okay now the table is created you can see the table name can be changed here so you get a tab here design tab just go here and name it as tbl data and press enter now I'll go here. Select the pivot table. Go to analyze. So we have changed data source in the data group. So select it. Change data source. So instead of this range that we have selected, give the table name. TBL data. Just say okay. And now you just have to add few rows. So let's go here. Let's say I'll copy the same. I'll create a copy of this. I'll paste it here. You look at it. The formatting also extended automatically. Now let me change the region name to Central. We don't have a Central region there. I'll just change the name to Central. Let's go here. I'll just right-click on this file table and refresh. or you could also go to analyze tab and refresh it so you can see the central so we have got only for december that's fine we have copied only that data you understood so if i remove this date you will be able to see that here and place the region here see you can see here and if i remove it let's say even if i remove these rows later right click i'll say delete rows <coughs> delete table rows and i'll come here and i'll refresh it again so that will vanish so it becomes uh, you know dynamic now as in when you add the data either you add a column or you add rows so you just have to come here and refresh that's all so is your doubt clear yeah yes now let us uh, see how to prepare a simple dashboard using this pivot table now let me show you that just go to view tab i'll remove the grid lines just to have a better view of our dashboard so now we can see reason wise sales here i would like to see product wise customer type wise so we are preparing three different reports just 
copy this pivot table i'll prepare another one i'll just place it here paste it see in this report i'll remove region i'll give product next another copy of it i'll paste it here see in this i would like to insert customer type and remove region now we have three pivot tables i'll rename them for my reference so you can go to analyze tab here you can see it is pivot table one i'll just say pvt region if you have renamed it it is useful for you to identify so i'll say this is pvt product and this one is pvt <coughs> customer press enter after renaming it so that it will take the name now after we are done with it i would like to insert charts for them each individual report i would like to insert a chart so i'll also include a column here yeah just to place the charts properly okay so that our dashboard looks neat now you just have to place your cursor in the pivot table you go to analyze tab you have pivot chart click on it it will show you various types of charts that you can use on it i'll go for column and see i don't want these filter buttons or field buttons to appear in my chart it's going to consume space so i'll just remove it right click on that hide all field buttons on chart that's it. and i don't require this axis as well i'll remove this so i can rename the chart title just remove i'll say region wise sales and we don't require this legend also now i'll reduce the size of the chart and i'll place it here you can position it right under this so i'll repeat the same for other pivot tables as well so let us choose different types of charts for each of them if for uh, product type let me choose pie chart i'll go by this again the same thing over here i'll say hide all field buttons i don't require these legends as well we can see what alternative can be provided for that we'll say product wise sales and i can reduce the size i would like to display data labels instead see we have the data labels here i want to format the data labels let's say so you can go here i want to show the category name if you want value you can display value instead i would like to show percentage i'll give that and i want to format it so i'll just go here i'll make the font white color it displays well <coughs> i'll reduce the chart size and place it here okay next you can also adjust it using these things let's first complete this later we'll see how to improvise this select this again i'll insert another chart on this so this time let's say i'll choose bar chart just say okay and perform the same steps on this chart as well hide all field buttons so change the chart title 
you say this is customer wise sales let's say customer type wise sales and you can also add data labels to this as well just select them it will appear here now let us reduce the size of the chart and arrange it over here okay so you can do this now i have to filter my chart based on the selection so again even for this i would like to give some data labels i can choose to do so if you want it to be a little more you know perfect in the way it is displaying you can increase the column width just to give some more gap between the reports and you'll get some space to arrange the charts right below this so let me push it around i'll increase the size of this chart and i'll remove the grid lines it looks better yes so now we are ready so you can see here but if i have to include the slicer and timeline for that we we have less space so you have to make such adjustments so i'll include few more rows here So I'll get some space to include the slicer and timeline. For that reason, we are using this space. So just go here, insert slicer. Place your cursor in one of the pivot tables. Go to analyze. Choose insert slicer. So I want to filter all these three reports based on the salesperson name. I'll choose. I'll reduce the size of this slicer so that you can also show it in two columns if you want you can split it so you can select the slicer you have the option to show it in different manners you have columns here just increase it to two columns you can save more space you can customize it like this as well Now I can place it here and I can choose one of the formats. <clears throat> Next, I also want it to be filtered based on the date. So let's go here, place your cursor on one of the pivot tables and insert timeline. So I'll choose this, click OK, see the timeline and reduce. okay so this is covering our report you need to add few more rows for this so you need to adjust it like this guys okay so that's the reason we leave some space in the end of the sheet usually to place them so if you push it to below so even that will affect the view of our reports so I'll just select this part. So that should be enough. I'll remove it. Yes. Now the next part is you need to check whether these two slicer and timeline, whether they are connected to your all the three pivot tables. So how to do that? Right click on the slicer. You get to see report connections. See, only region pivot table is connected to it. I'll select the other two pivot tables. Just say OK. And again, the same thing for this also. Report connections. Select the other two pivot tables. 
now based on the selection you do in salesperson name and this you can see all three reports are changing okay this is a very simple dashboard i just wanted to show you using this uh, slicer and timeline so you need a little more patience to adjust all of them to get displayed on the same screen and it looks more beautiful you can still improvise it i just made a very simple one okay did you all understand this part uh, and uh, can we protect this uh, using passport if you protect it again uh, you need to make some changes in order to give selections so just mute yourself and show you see if you just go and protect the sheet and it's i'll protect it without any password you can see here it doesn't allow me to select any slicer or timeline so everything is stand still this should not be the case the user should be able to use this and change the data here just go to unprotect sheet so how to do that so right click on this so you have size and properties okay let it be uh, the thing I know what i want to ask is so other person should not be able to manipulate it so i understood your concern but for that you need to make some changes here allow all users on this worksheet to let's say we have to enable use pivot table and chart so let me select this just say okay so now you will be able to edit this let me disable it again <clears throat> 